That's the thing, Ninja. It's like the show is so good that it's got everybody jonesing. That's a good thing. I think it's also uh, it's an interesting trend that we've seen in the last few years in terms of what a good show can do for a franchise that's already established. But it's I don't want to say it's stale, but it's in between major releases. Um, so think about you know Arcana. Um, the Cyberpunk 2077 show, The Witcher 3 show, um, The Last of Us show. We've seen some critically acclaimed and hit shows around video games come out over the last, like, four to five years. Um, and it's been, it's been very good television to watch. And it's, it's starting to get to the point where every time you see a good show like this happening, the numbers surge for whatever are the, um, you know the the relevant games around those properties at the time which is a great thing it's also great to see video game companies leaning into that and coming on board to serve as like executive producers so i want to look at like the last of us show as an example because that's one of the most recent that could pop into my brain because look at who direct let's just look at look at the show rudder was like he went from hbo's hit show on chernobyl right and did this huge like scientific documentary type drama series and then he went from that <laughs> and did the last of us and it was like it gave the last of us a gritty realistic feel that took an already gritty dark video game franchise and made it into another form of art and they did an adaptation that was incredibly well done and I look at what they've done with the Fallout series so far. I'm only up to episode five. Um, I've still got three more episodes to go. I'm watching episode six tomorrow morning to get the review out tomorrow. Um, I may watch it later tonight. We'll see. Um, but in any case, episode six comes out tomorrow. Um, I'm The show is really, 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 really good. Somebody said on one of my YouTube videos, uh, on one of the reviews, they were like, I wish Walton Goggins would get his own spinoff show as the ghoul to, like, see his progression from you know the the one-time actor you know into you know what he's become and it's it's an interesting it's an interesting concept but it the show has been very well done so far i will say um, I'm, I'm happy to see more video game adaptations happening now uh, i know that i've always enjoyed television as a general rule but um like many people, I, I'm always nervous when an adaptation happens because you never know how it's going to turn out. Like, um, for every Last of Us or Fallout 4, there's like, <laughs> thinking back to the um, Street Fighter film from the 90s with, with Van Damme, like, there are, for every really good video game adaptation, there are really, really bad but fun video game adaptations you know so i'm really i'm really happy to see ones that are happening now that are critically acclaimed well received and getting all sorts of just attention it's really cool akazar says i play 76 with friends getting together in discord with a large group taking over a server and doing events every 20 minutes is the greatest of all time for 76 sounds like a normal fallout game it's not even the same game uh dun 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 Parpake says, I'm watching you playing Starfield on my Steam Deck at the same time. Starfield's a good game, man. Gets way too much hate from from people. Akazar says, I'm glad they chose to tell a new story in Fallout. I'm not a fan of TV shows or movies that adapt note for note. Right, so that was the interesting thing about the, the most recent Halo show. I think one of the reasons that the first... <laughs> I'm like, take a song, he's getting impatient. The first season of Halo was off the book like completely off the book to tell a new story and it resonated for me it did not resonate with a lot of the hardcore neckbeard fans and they were very vocal about it on the internet i thought it was great the way they told a brand new story and a new interpretation and i'm glad they did because when they got into season two every angry neckbeard out there suddenly was saying oh we were wrong season two was amazing we love the halo show and it's like yeah because you didn't understand slow burn world building <laughs> but now what they've done is they've blended that original in with some of the game lore where you were coming into um the events of of halo reach 
which is like the prequel game, right? And and so they did a very good job of, of like using source material as sort of a story object to work towards, but it's not like it wasn't a central part of the entire thing. The entire thing is getting to the Halo, you know, and, and, and that's what everyone wants to see. So it's it's a very cool way of doing storytelling when it happens properly. Um, but I'm, I'm much happier because otherwise you end up getting people um, who get very upset with like, um, you know, I, I definitely criticize Rings of Power in places, but I also enjoyed it while critiquing it. And some people weren't able to enjoy it. Some people are so hardcore about the lore that they just can't. And there's a lot of angry Star Wars and Star Trek fans out there who can't handle the modern variations. So I get it. Um, you, you can't adapt everything note for note. You never should. Joe says, I love seeing more where there's where they would have had a game and then while the next game is being developed, have a show going on to continue the story. The next game, next game picks up where the show ends. It would take planning, but what would be awesome? And that's kind of what if for people who play Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder, um, those tabletop companies have done a very good job of maintaining storylines that arc between properties. So like Neverwinter the MMO also follows the same timeline as the campaigns that are coming out for the for the official Forgotten Realms licensed D and D products. So and any books that come out are also in that same timeline. So they've got and and Star Wars is doing the same thing. And now they've got the High Republic coming in the pipeline. Um, Star Trek is doing the same thing with all their various shows that they've got going on. Um, it does take planning. It, more importantly, it takes a a, stu, a a production company who's willing to put in a quarter million dollars to a half a million dollars minimum investment to be able to pull that off because it takes a lot of money to make all that happen. Um, it's crazy. Um, just as love to see more. I would love to see more too. Akazar Space says, maybe we'll get a spy thriller star starring Goggins and the rest doing pre-war Vault Tech, West Tech, Robocop spy versus spy thrillers. Oh, I guarantee. Yeah, you're not wrong. Akazar. Um, High-level strategy meetings happening right now about the Fallout brand at Microsoft HQ. Oh, for sure. They're seeing the surge in numbers in the video game being streamed. Me being one of those people. Um, Wolfheart did a stream. Yeah, he. I don't think he had ever played Fallout 4 either. He did a stream yesterday. My, you know, my little 600 views stream. You know, I was like, that's pretty fun. And I go, Wolfheart got like 36,000 views on his first Fallout 4 stream. The hunger is there. Um, there are people out there bigger content creators and streamers who are everybody everybody is doing fallout 4 right now and um fallout 76 and everyone's loving the show so that is absolutely it would be very interesting to see if there's a pivot from bethesda um it'll be it'll be interesting um yeah yeah something to pay attention to for sure <laughs> 